With all this pandemic restricted travel these days, many are referring to this time as the quote unquote summer of the road trip. And it's really not a surprise what with RV rentals and sales through the roof and families hitting the road as they rethink their own summer plans. And it's fitting to be thinking about road trips and in particular long and arduous journeys, yet at the same time successful and worthwhile journeys as we think towards our Parsha this week. In the beginning of Parsha at Masi, the Torah records the 42 journeys that the Jewish people make from the time they left Egypt until they were about to enter into the Holy Land. And perhaps the most well-known question asked on our Parsha is, why the list of these journeys, these Masaot, they're so long, they're seemingly unnecessary. After all, the Torah never wastes words. Why do we care about each and every single stop along the way? When you take a road trip, do you recount every bathroom break, every diaper changing stop at the end of the trip? Why should we recall every single pit stop on this journey to Eretz Yisrael? And the commentaries offer different approaches to explain the purpose of this listing. But I want to share with you really just two nearly opposite ideas that in many ways are perfect complements with one another. Rashi famously writes that this list serves to teach us about the kindness that God showed the Jewish people. As Rashi explains, for most of the 40 years of travel, things were not actually too difficult for the Jewish people. They embarked only 20 times during the middle of 38 years because God didn't want to wish to cause them excessive inconvenience through frequent or short encampments. And so according to Rashi, this list is included in the Parsha as a reflection of God's love for the Jewish people. And even though Hashem punished B'nai Israel as a result of the sin of the spies, and he made them travel in the wilderness for 40 years, he nevertheless showed them care and concern throughout this entire time. But on the other hand, the Sforno writes that this entire section was added to demonstrate not God's love for his people, but rather the people's love for God. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted the Jewish people's travels to be recorded to inform them of the merit in following Hashem in an unsown desert, such that they would be worthy of inheriting the land. And this idea is based on the famous Pasuk from Yirmiyahu that Ko Amar Hashem, Zacharti la chesed neuraich. That the Jewish people, that they merited eternal reward because they loyally followed Hashem into and through the desert despite the harsh conditions. And as such, the Jewish people, they accrued reward for every encampment, for every disembarkment during this entire period, for every stage of their 40-year journey. And the Torah formally, therefore, documents every encampment in our Parsha as an eternal testament to both the faith and the devotion that the Jewish people showed by following Hashem through the barren wilderness. And if you think about this idea from the Sforno for just a minute, a truly meaningful idea emerges. The period of travel in the Midbar and the desert, it likely represents the fact that our loyalty to God must remain firm even in the quote-unquote wilderness even under trying, difficult circumstances. Not always does God lead us to lush green pastures. Torah commitment doesn't guarantee a person unbridled success or a life free of hassles or challenges. Sometimes when we follow God, we need to pass through harsh terrain. Sometimes we experience moments of hardship. And like the Jewish people in the wilderness, we might not always be successful in confronting these challenges. We might at times grow weary and impatient from the challenges that we encounter on the journey, no different than the way that the Jewish people grew exasperated and protested at several points during their experiences in the wilderness. But our Parsha testifies the fact that the Jewish people overall, they kept their faith. They were steadfast and loyal in their commitment to follow God through thick and thin, and in doing so, providing an instructive and inspiring model of unwavering loyalty, despite the sacrifices that are often entailed. Even when Torah observance or our lives take us through a wilderness, when it poses extreme challenges and difficulties, 
we nevertheless continue moving forward. We continue keeping faith in Hashem to lead us and to guide us. And I've been thinking about this idea a lot these last few months as we live through the roller coaster that is the COVID-19 pandemic. Each day has brought with it new challenges and difficulties. Loved ones, friends, family who are ill, who are struggling, who are dealing with grief and loss. And at the same time, so much sacrifice from our comforts to our routines to our wants and our needs. And yet, like the generation in the Midbar, when they were in the wilderness, it is our faith in God in these darkest and most trying moments that gives us strength to overcome any obstacle. But we all know, especially now as cases rise and things are starting to look quite bleak, that it can be really hard to have that faith that we can overcome any obstacle in the wilderness of life. And so to find that strength, it's Rashi's words, it's Rashi's approach that complement the Sforno and guide us. God loves us. He cares for us. He walks with us through the dark valleys and holds our hand when we need strength. God loves us, and that gives us the strength to love him, to have faith, to have confidence, to stand up to any challenge or any sacrifice that's being asked of us. And so I pray that all of us continue to move forward whenever we face challenges or difficulties, that we should persevere when we're asked to sacrifice and that we should do so with the knowledge that God loves and cares for each and every one of us. And that should give us the confidence that any road or journey that we take, it will ultimately, with God's help, lead us to the promised land. And so Orit and Shaya and Nava and Noam, they join me in wishing you and your family a Shabbat Shalom, a restful and a peaceful Shabbat.